Thank you for watching. I'm a tiny bit late to the party with uh, this one. There's plenty of unboxings out there already, but that's because I've been traveling. I'm currently putting together an entire video series about uh, my journey to uh, Las Vegas, to the Grand Canyon. Did some awesome RC stuff over there. But nevertheless, I still want you to have a look at this car in case you perhaps have not seen it yet. This is the all new, uh, or all new, it's been a couple, it's been out a couple of weeks right now, but this is the, the Arma Outcast. Uh, it's a stunt truck. It's not uh, a platform that I already have. I don't have a lot of Arma cars. I, in fact, I only have one, uh, which is the Arma Nero. I've unboxed that car uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, been having great fun with it. Really impressed with the build quality. I was not really impressed with the box art, however. Now, it seems like they have really stepped it up uh, on this one. Maybe not box art wise, but uh, when it comes to the looks of uh, the truck. Uh, so what you see is kind of like a classic truck uh, looking body but like with a twist so it has like a spoiler has these huge wheels and I really dig it I can't wait to uh, show you the actual car I already took it out of the box uh, let's go over some of the features first it's 6S capable it's sold as a stunt truck it's four-wheel drive it's brushless it is waterproof and overall I think that that ticks a lot of boxes for uh, the bashers out there uh, if I turn the box around you see a picture of the back of the car or of the truck so uh, you can also see that there's a wheelie bar installed uh, again a look at that spoiler there's a roll bar um, anyway I think uh, looking at boxes is a bit boring so I will throw this one to the side uh, get the truck and uh, get the radio and all the, the other knickknacks that you get and uh, show you what you actually get inside this box Alright, so this is all the stuff that you find inside the box. Now first off, let's uh, start with the radio. Uh, this is a familiar looking unit. I also found this radio with my uh, Axial SEX10 uh, the, the version 2, the ready to run. I also got this radio with my SMT10 by Axial, so it's really like a, a hobby co product. Um, with the Nero as well, you find a radio that looks very similar to this, except that that one has that uh, dial to uh, lock all the diffs and uh, go into that uh, diff brain mode. I like the way that it uh, feels. Uh, I haven't had any complaints yet, so I, there's really no doubt in my mind that it will perform well with this truck as well. Um, there's some dual rates in case you want to uh, set that up. Uh, throttle and steering trim, all of your reverse switches on the back and uh, a power switch. Then uh, on the top there's a green LED indicator light just to show you if you actually turned it, uh, turned it on or off uh, so you can't make a mistake by putting it away with it still being turned on because uh, you will see that easily. Uh, four double A's, no complaints. Uh, this is a good radio and uh, happy to see it with this uh, truck. Um, do more boring stuff as always. You get some, uh, some tools. Pretty complete. I'm uh, impressed with uh, the amount of tools that you actually get with this truck. Uh, so this is a, a cross wrench for your uh, wheel nuts, all that stuff. A smaller cross wrench as well in case you really want to dig in and do some maintenance or uh, some setting up. A bunch of Allen keys uh, and you never have enough of those. You get some uh, additional body posts. I'm thinking that this is in case you want to change it out for a different looking body. I'm not sure why you want to do that, but we'll get into that later because I think that the truck looks awesome as it is. Uh, but it's cool of them to include that, pretty thoughtful right there. Uh, you get some XT90 connectors, those are also the ones that are installed uh, in the truck, so in case you do not have those on any batteries, you can still uh, go ahead, solder these on uh, and bash it. I for one, I will be changing them out, I'm running uh, castle connectors on all of my uh, batteries. But it is uh, really thoughtful, I think, of uh, Arma to include these. Um, a leaflet. Uh, which uh, at first glance uh, hold upside down just because it doesn't seem to make any sense but then on closer inspection they're actually flying the truck upside down but of course it is a stunt truck so uh, most likely you will be doing as much upside downing as right side upping and you get a manual well with the Nero as well I found the manual to be uh, very clear so in case you need to do some uh, troubleshooting or you uh, break some parts and you need those parts numbers all of those are uh, included in this manual. Um, there's also an additional pinion included. I'm guessing that you get a bit of a higher speed out of that one. I'm not quite sure, so first off I will be reading this manual and see uh, why that is the way it is. Now on to uh, the most important thing, which is of course the truck. Uh, again, opinions are really all over the place when it comes to the looks of the Arma Outcast. I for one, I really like it. I like seeing uh, classic trucks 
or classic inspired trucks and uh, I think they really knocked it out of the park in the in the looks division on this one now in case you don't like it you can of course uh, swap out the body but uh, yeah, I, I dig it. Um, the wheels, 1552 copies, if you're familiar with the uh, Gimkana 7. Uh, the the Hoonigan uh, Mustang, uh, built by uh, RTR. Then you are also familiar with these rims, so they're an exact copy of those uh, rims. Um, not sure if they're licensed or not, but uh, good job Arma on actually uh, doing that. The tires, however, um, not too keen on them. Um, these are really Proline Badland copies. I know a lot of people have already uh, pointed that out in their videos. I think that, well, especially a company like Arma being such an innovative company, they are more than capable of coming uh, up with like a thread pattern of their own instead of uh, knocking off a design of another RC manufacturer. They do feel grippy, they do look good, but again, you know, um, they're, they're capable of designing their own, so I don't really see the need for them to go this route. The spoiler in the back. That's again one of those discussion points. Some people go like, oh, I don't like it because classic trucks don't have spoilers. You know what? It's it's not a scale car. It will never be a scale looking car. So I do like the fact that that spoiler is installed. In case you do uh, sort of like flip it over, land on its roof, then this also absorbs a ton of impact. So I think it is a good thing that they installed this. Uh, together with that roll bar, I asked Vass why the hell these screws are installed over there, but that's uh, apparently to make it spark and uh, to, to sort of add some extra protection in case you do slide over the roof on for example the speed run. This is of course a very tippy car, that's, that's also why they call it a stunt truck. Uh, the wheels they're, they're huge so there's a lot of uh, uh, rotating force going on, a lot of rotating mass and then the front and the back being pushed together so closely makes for a really nimble and agile truck. So this thing is really set up for acrobatics. If you look at the bottom you can also see that there's really no mistake that this is a stunt truck because the footprint of it is almost square. Um, that also makes it really easy to wheelie it and that's the reason why they installed this uh, wheelie bar. I really dig the way that it looks. It's uh, really different and uh, well again you know it's uh, one of those love it or hate it things but uh, I for one am pretty happy with the way it looks. Um, this body, the color on it, gunmetal, I like it. Uh, if you put it outside, it really sparkles. I dare say it sparkles a bit more than uh, Tamiya gunmetal. So, um, yeah, clean looking. No need for like any loud color scheme because the body is pretty intricately shaped as it is. What I will be doing, however, is I'm going to give these uh, wheel arches a coat of black. I will be peeling most of the stickers off and just having some fun with this uh, ready to run body in, uh, I don't know, give it it, giving it like an extra coat of paint and uh, giving it a few hours of uh, work and seeing if I can actually make it look different. Now, taking it off. <coughs> um, this is something that I really like. I think this should be mandatory on uh, every RC car. These uh, body clips held in place with these tethers. That's a really great idea. Uh, they had the same thing going on on the Arma Nero. The only downside to it is if you want to install them on a new body, so for example you completely fuck up this shell and you want to paint up a new one, make sure you also order a set of these uh, tethers because pulling them out and reinstalling them is damn near impossible and I actually managed to break two of them when I tried doing that on the Nero. Um, the idea is great and the way that you can't lose any body clips is also uh, pretty smart. So uh, kudos to Arma for that. Let's look at this because this is of course the most important part of the Arma Outcast. Um, Again, I'm not familiar with uh, the full range of Arma vehicles. I've been reading up a tiny bit. People say the A-arms come from the Creighton, the chassis comes from the Typhon. They also say that uh, a guy called, that, uh, I believe, Thomas Patterson uh, kind of built a prototype uh, that almost looked like this with a short wheelbase with the white stance. Uh, I really like it. I'm, again, not familiar with, with any of those uh, previous vehicles. So I'm just going to go based off of what I see right here. Um, in the front, a pretty non-functional bumper, it's more for looks to uh, kind of complement that body. Nothing wrong with that. The front wheels are going to absorb most of the impact anyway in case you do have a nose landing. Uh, the A-arms, everything coming from the crate and is I think a good thing. That car has been around for a while. It has been uh, tried and tested and uh, people have really put them through their paces so I'm pretty confident that the plastic on this is uh, 
durable and that it's strong. It, it looks really good. I like the finish quality of it. Uh, so if it actually holds up as well, then I'm a happy camper. In the front you also have a universal drive shaft going on, hardened steel, uh, pretty thick. There's a sway bar that's uh, already installed. And I think the most important thing for me is uh, seeing that they really did their homework on these uh, shock absorbers. So I like having aluminum shock absorbers. And with aluminum shock absorbers, I don't mean just the shock body, I mean the entire thing. So Arma did that. Uh, so they have aluminum shock caps, aluminum shock bodies in a pretty cool red anodized color. Um, they have some uh, shock collars that you can uh, that you can wind up and down to set your uh, your spring rate. A tiny bit different in case you uh, want to do that. Your preload uh, that's also aluminum. And then to finish it off, they're actually booted shocks. To me, that's a perfect setup. Nothing wrong with that. Feels good. May need a tiny bit of uh, fine tuning in the long run. I'm not exactly sure how well it's going to uh, perform once the batteries are in there, but they feel really uh, fluent and uh, I don't know. It's plush uh, suspension. I uh, I'm impressed with it. The tie rods in the front also hard and steel look good. What I really like is towards the, the wheel hub in the front there's, uh, and I'm not sure if this is something that they did on previous vehicles as well, but there's a tiny aluminum plate that actually links it to the hub. Uh, that surely adds in the in the looks department, but uh, I'm thinking it also durability wise that can add a tiny bit. The Ackerman is aluminum, the front top plate is also aluminum with a tiny Arma logo stamped out. It's impossible to see that from the angle that you're at right now, so we will make sure to uh, insert a close up of that uh, setup. Uh, the shock towers are really beefy, really thick. Uh, there's no doubt that this is going to uh, hold up. The whole steering setup and the whole steering rack looks good to me. There's a plastic uh, servo saver, no doubt with a big spring and no doubt that there's a lot of uh, aluminum parts inside there as well because at first glance I can see that there's some red anodized aluminum coming from the bottom of the chassis. Um, then there is a plastic connector leading up to an aluminum servo horn to uh, a waterproof servo. Um, that's a really stout looking setup. Um, I'm not sure how the servo is going to perform. I don't have a lot of experience with uh, these Arma electronics, but so far so good. From what I can see it looks, it looks stout and it looks beefy. Um, there's a waterproof switch right here. There's a waterproof ESC again 6S capable. Uh, Arma logo stamped out in the top. It looks really cool. Motor wires are uh, nicely tucked away on the side right here and there's a ton of artwork going on on that uh, 2050 kV motor. Coming from the ESC you have your uh, XT90 battery connectors. This one is looped through so in case you want to run one single 4S battery or one single uh, 6S battery you can do that. Uh, simply removing this plug uh, allows you to plug in two separate batteries so you can run it on 2x2S or 2x3S and that's also what I will be doing. Battery tray is fairly large. Uh, there's an area here in the front where you can actually uh, tuck them away. There's a big velcro strap going on from the front to the back and also one from the side to the side making sure that your batteries are not going to fall out when you're bashing. A completely water sealed or uh, waterproof radio box right here. Um, nicely designed and uh, nicely tucked away. I like the way that, uh, that that's located. Uh, it makes sure that there's really no clutter inside this entire chassis uh, and everything inside this tub is really concealed and it looks clean. Then there's this plastic tiny tower in the center. So it looks uh, like a smart solution to absorb some of the impact uh, and not transferring into uh, the center diff to the motor mount, potentially damaging your ESC, your motor and all that stuff. Uh, simply removing these two body clips in the back, make sure that you can uh, slide these two larger pins out, take the entire plastic contraption off and you have full access to your pinion, your spur, uh, your motor mount, your center diff, everything that you need. Uh, in order to uh, perhaps do some maintenance or do some fine tuning. The center drive shafts, well like the, like the universals in the front, center drive shafts seem to be really stout and uh, beefy. I like the way that uh, everything is uh, finished and detailed. Plastic chassis braces front and back, not a big deal at all. This is such a compact car and it feels so sturdy as it is that you don't need any aluminum going up from those uh, front and rear bulkheads to the center of the chassis to make sure that everything actually stays planted. Um, 
Well, in the back, the body posts, I didn't mention anything about the body posts in the front, but uh, these type of body posts, I, uh, I dig them with those uh, pivoting uh, tiny platforms on there, making sure that if you do land it on the roof, you're not going to push those body posts all the way through the shell, just uh, adding a tiny bit to the durability. You will see in the back, there's a bit of a wider shock tower, uh, also aluminum, the same awesome shocks, except they're a tiny bit longer. Um, you don't need more travel than, uh, than this. At first, in the front, I was a tiny bit apprehensive about the amount of travel, just seeing that the shocks are so short. Uh, but then, with the way that it's set up, with the narrow shock tower in the front and the wider one in the back, it makes it more stable and you still have uh, an, an excessive amount, almost, of uh, travel going on. Regular dock bone setup in the back. Uh, the tie rods on the top there look really good. Big bearings. I really have nothing uh, to complain about. You can set uh, everything up uh, in seemingly in an easy way. So you, there's your droop screws over here. Everything looks uh, very accessible. Uh, so if you do want to fine tune it, that is not going to be something that's uh, really hard to do. Well, I think that uh, just about covers it. I just wanted to get this video done to make sure that I can actually sling some paint uh, on this ready to run shell uh, before taking it out for a spin. There. Uh, with the spoiler, by the way, it is a bit of a bitch to get the body back on, but uh, I truly forgive them for that, seeing how awesome this, uh, this truck looks. Um, so there you have it, the Arm Outcast, a 6S capable, 4-wheel drive, brushless stunt truck. I never had a stunt truck, and I'm sure as hell going to have a lot of fun with this one, seeing uh, how acrobatic it actually is. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, I can imagine that I skipped a lot. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the box below. If you want to see Vass's unboxing, Vass from uh, Aussie RC Playground, my buddy, he did a great technical unboxing of this uh, Arma Outcast. I will make sure that there's a, a link to his video also in uh, the description box. In the next video, I'm going to make this my own, customize it a tiny bit, and uh, ensure that it looks different than all of the uh, other uh, Arma Outcasts uh, out there. If you want to be ahead of what I'm doing over here, uh, Instagram and Facebook, there's links to those in the video description as well. Uh, of course, also a link to Arma's website with way more information about this uh, Arma Outcast. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Back on.